Hey guys, welcome to the garden. Today we are building a worm farm. I have a whole bunch of stuff out here with me and I'm gonna take you through how I'm building my first worm farm. Um, I am using a guide, um, a free ebook guide on starting your own worm farm from Hey It's a Good Life. Natalie is super knowledgeable about worm farms and she's how I have learned everything um, about vermicomposting and starting a worm farm. So I have printed out a couple pages from that free ebook she has on her website heyitsagoodlife.com. I would highly suggest downloading this and checking her out if you want to learn more about worm farming because I uh, have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but we're gonna learn together. Um, I have a bunch of stuff out here. I have my worms, my bin, bedding, greens, browns, grit, and water. So I'm gonna take you through all of these things that I have out here and what their purpose is, and then we will actually build our worm farm. So the first thing on this checklist here, which is very handy, is worms. Now I got my worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm online. I bought 250 red wiggler worms, great for composting. Um, I ordered them, they shipped on Monday and they got here today, which is Wednesday. So they look great. Um, they were squirming all over and a few of them escaped earlier. But so I had to actually um, use a binder clip to keep the bag closed because they were figuring out how to escape the bag. But they are in here. Um, they look, I mean, they look great. They're worms. Um, I'll try to show you in the bag, but yeah, you're not gonna be able to see anything. They're in a black bag. So I would highly suggest checking out Uncle Jim's Worm Farm if you are looking to purchase your own worms. Um, these are specifically red wigglers. These are what is suggested to use for uh, worm farms and composting and making worm castings because they are composting worms. So when I get them out of here, I'll show you them what they look like. Um, they're not gonna look like you think when you get them out of the bag, they're a little small and shrivelly, but when you order from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm, you get this little instruction sheet in your box, which is really cool. It gives you all types of like frequently asked questions. How do I, what do I do after I get them? They seem really small. Uh, how fast are they gonna grow? That type of thing. So this is really great information and it really helped me feel more confident in my worm farming adventure so really like this company so far they do have a guarantee on their worms um, they guarantee live delivery which i really like uh, they do suggest that you don't let your box sit out in direct sunlight so my worms were delivered this morning. I was not here. Um, I actually had my mom stop by and put them in the house for me. And they are alive and kicking in their little bag. So the worms, we got them. The next thing on this checklist is a bin. So I am actually going to be using um, two five gallon buckets. Went to Lowe's, got two buckets, also got a lid for those buckets. Um, you want to make sure, from what I have read, you don't necessarily want to use a clear bin because worms are photosensitive. So that's why I chose to do the five gallon buckets. Um, I have two of them here. I'm gonna nest one inside the other and then put the lid on the top. These buckets from, these are from Lowe's. I don't know about the other hardware stores, but these are made of HDPE, which is, like a food safe plastic, I think, from what I've read and a couple other videos I've watched. So that's like what your, you know, Rubbermaid containers and stuff are usually made out of, I think. So don't quote me on that, but these are nice and sturdy, they're nice and thick. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna drill some holes in these so the worms can one, have some air circulation, and two, so the top bucket can drain into the bottom bucket. Um, and that is where we will get our leachate, lechate. I don't know, the liquid that runs off the worms. I don't really know what everything is called yet, but we're gonna figure it out. So we have our bin. Next on the list is bedding. So 
I actually ordered, along with my worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm, I ordered some cocoa core. Um, this was like an add-on to my worms. It was like $9 for this. This is a two gallon uh, brick of cocoa core. So I'm gonna rip half of this off and I have another bucket over here with just like a scoop of just soil in it. Um, since my soil is like a sandy loam, it will provide some grit along with the cocoa core. So we're gonna do that. Next is greens. So for the greens, this is my little countertop compost bin. It has a really nasty banana in it that fell off of the bunch today. Um, this tops of some basil that I didn't use for dinner and a green bell pepper that shriveled up in the fridge because I didn't know it was there. So that's what we're gonna start with. Um, you can feed them just like you would feed your compost. So you don't wanna feed them anything dairy based, no meat, nothing like spicy, no oils, uh, no citrus, that's important. That can throw off the pH balance of your bin. But anything like eggshells, uh, leafy greens, like it, tomorrow morning I may come out and grab some like really bug damaged kale and put that in here. Um, just stuff like that that they will enjoy. Uh, the next thing is browns and for my browns I am using shredded paper. I have put it in this aluminum pan because I didn't need very much of it. This is probably way too much but this is shredded paper um it is just regular paper there's newspaper in here there's regular just paper in here you don't want anything coated or anything like glossy but just matte finished regular paper good to go i also use this to mulch my raised beds so this is wonderful and i love it okay next on the list is grit now for grit this is essentially just something that they can use to help move themselves around in the bin so i'm using coffee grounds this is my beautiful coffee grounds from this morning um you can use vermiculite perlite eggshell or coffee grounds according to this list um if you use eggshell you'd probably have to like grind it up but yeah you can use eggshell or perlite or vermiculite but i had some coffee grounds so i put those in a little paper bowl and we're going to use those and then water. So I have, where's it at? Over there, I have a watering can that I filled up with filtered water from my sink. You do not want to use water um, that has chlorine in it um, or anything like that. So if you are on city water or your well water has a lot of like heavy metals in it or whatever, use filtered water either from like an in-sink filter or through like a bottled water situation or whatever or you can use a filter they make filters for your hose that you can put on as well but i think i'm just going to stick with using water out of my sink um, my plan is to keep this pretty near the back door of the house so i can easily go out and feed and water the worms so we have everything we need i'm gonna mix up some of this cocoa core and some soil get it moist and then we're gonna get started on drilling some holes in the bin okay so i have holes drilled in one of my buckets the second bucket that on that goes on the bottom is going to stay just as it is but the bucket on the top is the one you're going to be drilling holes in so in the bottom of this bucket you can see i have drilled a bunch of holes i used a quarter inch drill bit for those those are to let liquid drain out of the bucket into the bottom bucket around the top you can kind of see I've drilled eighth inch holes all the way around here and down here. This is to make sure the worms have good airflow. Now, I also need to drill some holes in the lid. So what I'm gonna do basically is take my bucket with the holes and I'm gonna nest it in my bucket with no holes. And it's gonna be like this. So this bucket has about this much space at the bottom of it and that is where our liquid is going to run and that's where it's going to stay that way the worms are not sitting in liquid now in the lid the worms are escaping the bag okay no children back in your bag okay so i drilled holes in this lid just kind of all over the place 
I did them in either one of these little places right here and then around the middle. So this will be to let rainwater in, but not a lot, and also help keep them, keep airflow moving through the bin. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna go to the next page of this wonderful free ebook. And we're gonna basically work our way from the bottom to the top. This is a wonderful diagram in the free ebook and it's gonna be really helpful. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take this, which is some packing paper. And I'm gonna fold that into some semblance of a shape that will fit in the bottom of this bucket. Um, this is the paper that comes in my Chewy box. This is just that thin, it's like a paper grocery bag. Um, you can use a paper grocery bag. You can also just use a piece of cardboard um, or some newspaper, whatever you have. And we're gonna put this in the bottom of our bucket. This is to make sure that the worms do not get into the bottom bucket from the top bucket where we drilled the bigger holes. So it should look like this. You should have a bucket with a paper bag in the bottom of it. Okay, so here's my bucket. I have my paper bag in the bottom of it. What I'm gonna do first is take a little bit of water and just pour it in here just to get the bag just a little bit wet. Um, basically what this bag is doing, is this is gonna be like a coffee filter. So the water will run through, but the worms and the compost and the cocoa core will not. So the next thing on our list is two inches of browns, which for our browns, we are using shredded paper. So I'm gonna put a couple inches of this in here. Okay. Next is a sprinkle of food scraps and grit. So our food scraps are in here. We have a deliciously gooey bell pepper. I'm just gonna kind of rip into this. Now the worms will eat stuff faster and make compost faster if the pieces are smaller. Now obviously I do not have a knife out here so I am literally ripping this pepper from uh, itself and putting it in the bucket. And I really don't know how much to do but this is basically to encourage the worms to move farther down into the bucket. So I'm going to put some of the pepper and then in here, I have a really gross banana and it's juiced. So I'm just going to put some banana juice in here. And yeah, okay. So then we put some grit, which our grit is our coffee grounds. I'm not going to use the filter, obviously. But I am going to use the coffee grounds. So I'm just going to grab some of these and just kind of sprinkle them all over just like that. So now we're going to put our compost, or in this case, I have cocoa core and a little bit of soil. And we want a couple inches of this. So this is moist, but it's not sopping wet. So it's kind of like I like my potting soil. It's moist and it will stick together if you scrunch it, but it's not dripping if you do that. So we're just gonna put few scoops of this in here and essentially what we're doing is we're just covering up the food scraps and the grit and all of that so that way the worms have something to go through when they're trying to get to that stuff next we're going to do some more browns and then we're going to do some more food scraps and some grit and in this one i'm going to do the banana so i'm just going to oh gross I'm gonna squeeze this out of the peel and put it in here because they're not gonna eat the peel, but they will eat the actual banana itself. And then I also have like some basil stems from dinner. So I'm gonna just kind of pull these apart a little. I don't know if they'll eat this or not, but I had it laying on the counter and I thought, let's put it in here and see what happens. And then I'm also gonna put some more pieces of our bell pepper in here too. So basically once a week I will come out here and I will take whatever food scraps I have and just feed them to the worms. Give them some food, make sure they're staying moist 
and give them some more browns. So that can be shredded leaves, it can be shredded paper. Uh, my original plan was to use leaves, but I am running low on leaves right now. So I'm gonna have to dig some out of <laughs> the back of the yard. So I think I have a pretty good amount of food in here. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some more coffee grounds on top. I'm gonna put a couple more scoops of our cocoa core and soil mixture in here. And then we get to add our wormies. So I'm gonna dump these out in here, make sure none have escaped. And in here, you can see our little wormy friends moving around. So these are red wigglers. They are bred for composting. I'm gonna dump these out of the bag and they were shipped with uh, cocoa core. So they should be good to go. I got them all dumped down in there. Welcome to your new home. I am going to now shred up just a little bit of the cocoa core by itself. So I used all the stuff I had with my soil in it and I'm just gonna kinda scrape some of this off of this brick and just use it by itself. You're really supposed to let these bricks like sit but I'm not so I'm you know ripping pieces off and then I'm gonna shred it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cocoa core and I'm gonna put it on top of the wormies. Give them a nice little, nice little place to sleep and eat and live and make me compost. And then we're gonna top it off with some more of our shredded paper. I'm actually just gonna use the rest of this. And now the last step is to just give them a little bit of moisture. So this moisture is going to travel down into the bucket and give everybody a nice little rehydration. So this is what it should look like when it's done. You should just be looking at your browns. For me, shredded paper, but you can use shredded leaves. You can use shredded paper, newspaper, kind of whatever. So. Our bin is built. All I have to do now is put the lid on it. So that is how I am building my very first worm bin. It is by no means a fancy bin. There are bins you can buy that are like a three level system. Um, this is not one of those. <laughs> this cost me, uh, the buckets were $5 a piece and the lid was three. So $13 for the bin. Um, and then the worms, I bought 250 red wigglers from Uncle Jim's. I think they were $25 or something like that. Um, but I do highly recommend Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I would love to be someday. That would be awesome. Um, these arrived really well packed and... <sighs> I was very impressed with the shipping, with the information given to you in your shipment as well. So be sure to check them out if you are looking for composting worms. Now, if you can find them locally, um, then use those. Locally, I really only have access to like night crawlers, like as fishing bait, um, at like bait stores and stuff like that. So I didn't really look into it as much but I knew that Uncle Jim's Worm Farm was a great place to get worms. Um, I know many people who have gotten them there and have been very happy. So I am gonna go put my new worm bin in its new home and I will come check on the worms um, in a couple days, make sure they're in there moving around. The information that you get with your package from Uncle Jim says that it can take a couple days for them to acclimate to their new home. So uh, if, you noticed when I held them up, they are a little small and a little scraggly looking. And that is because they, that's what they do when they get stressed, essentially. They um, repel, they expel their water and they get smaller. So hopefully in the next couple days, they will perk back up 
and they will eat the yummy treats I gave them and then start making worm castings. Um, worms, according to this sheet that came in the package, these worms can double their population in 90 days. So in three months, I will have 500 worms in this bin, assuming they all live and none of them uh, fell to their death out of the bag onto the deck and into the cracks. So that is my worm farm setup for now. Um, we're gonna see how this goes. So if you have a worm farm and you have any advice, let me know. I'm happy to receive it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.